Ladies and gentlemen, dear shareholders, as chairman of the supervisory board, I hereby open the annual general meeting 2016 of Allianz SE. On behalf of the supervisory board and the board of management, I would like to welcome all the shareholders and all the representatives of the shareholders' associations, of the depository banks, of our shareholders, and of the press. Moreover, I would like to cordially welcome all the shareholders who follow our AGM on the Internet. The AGM will be broadcast in its entire length for shareholders of Allianz SE on the Internet. Ladies and gentlemen, it's certainly also in your interest that we have a, a, an appropriate time frame for this AGM, which enables you to stay till the very end. You'll find all the important organizational remarks in the information brochures which you've received at the entrance gates. In my additional remarks, I will therefore stick to the most important points. First of all, I would like to state that the annual general meeting was convened in due time and form on the 21st of March 2016. The minutes of the AGM will be taken by notary public Dr. Tilman Goethe, he sits over there on the podium. If you want to speak up in the general debate, I would ask you to hand in your request to speak as early as possible at the speaker's registration desk. At the entrance gates, your tickets were exchanged for an HV or AGM card. This AGM card, and that is important, replaces the voting card block that you've been familiar with from earlier annual general meetings. You will need this AGM card to participate in the ballots. Please therefore retain this card carefully till the voting starts. If you possess several entrance tickets and haven't exchanged all of these tickets against AGM cards, you can do so until the beginning of the ballots at the entrance gates. That is the only way to make sure that all the shares represented by you will be taken into account in the voting process. Details about the the voting process um, will be explained to you following the general debate. This year, for the first time, we will use mobile recording devices to receive the votes. I would therefore ask you at this juncture to get acquainted with the informational remarks regarding the ballot process. You will find information in the informational brochures that have been handed out and on your AGM card. In case you want to leave the AGM early on, I would also like you, I would also kindly ask you to get yourself acquainted with the remarks in the informational brochure and on the back of your AGM card. If you want to hand in any documents, especially for the notary public, please do so exclusively at the speaker's registration desk. You will also find a junior notary public at this desk. I would like to point out that you're not allowed to take any video and audio audio recordings here in the assembly hall and that you're also not allowed to record the online broadcast of our AGM. Moreover, I would ask you to switch off your cell phones here in the assembly hall during the AGM. So much for my organizational remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, the members of the supervisory board and the board of management um, are all present today. And before I turn to the agenda, I would like to inform you about changes on the board of management of Allianz SE, which have occurred since the last AGM. Mr. Manuel Bauer left the Board of Management on the 31st of August 2015. Mr. Bauer had been working for Allianz in different positions since 1990 and had been a member of the Board since 2011. The Supervisory Board expressed its gratitude and appreciation to Mr. Bauer for his major efforts and his work for Allianz. Now I would like to inform you about future changes on the Board of Management. Mr. J. Ralph will leave the Board of Management at the end of June of this year at his own request to be able to dedicate more time to his family. Moreover, Dr. Maximilian Zimmer will enter into his well-earned retirement at the end of his term at the end of 2016. Mr. Ralph, Dr. 
at Simera, as you will both stay for a little bit on the board of management. I don't want to dedicate my parting words to you today, but postpone these to the AGM of next year, and we'd be glad if we were able to welcome you then again. We will welcome as a new member of the board on the 1st of July, Ms. Jacqueline Hunt, who will be responsible for asset management and the life insurance business in the United States. On the 1st of January 2017, Dr. Günther Tallinger will start his and will enter into his position as a member of the Board of Management, and he will take over Dr. Zimmer's responsibility for investment management and also for the area of global life and health insurance. Now I would like to quickly talk about the changes on the personnel changes on the supervisory board since last AGM. On the 31st of July 2015, Franz Heiss, after 36 years of work for Allianz, entered into his well-earned retirement. We already um, said goodbye to him at the last AGM, and Mr. Heiss was, has in the meantime been replaced by the replacement candidate, uh, Mr. Jürgen Leverenz, who was elected in the AGM 2012 as supplementary candidate, and he entered, he's entered into the supervisory board with effect of the 1st of August 2015. Mr. Leverance has been a member of Allianz since 1999, first for Allianz Lebensversicherungs AG in Stuttgart, and he's since 1999 for Allianz Managed Operations and Services SE. He's sitting to my far left on the stage. Mr. Leverance, I would once again like to welcome you at this juncture cordially to our supervisory board. And then there was another change on the employee side of the supervisory board just recently. Ms. Iraglou Semler resigned her office on the 31st of March 2016 as she's taken over a new position within her trade union Verdi. She had been a member of the supervisory board since 2012. Unfortunately, Glu Ms. Glou Semler can't be with us today, but uh, I would like to state that we deeply regret um, that she's left our supervisory board because she uh, had a very pleasant manner and um, a very constructive, uh, constructive con contribution that she played to the supervisory board. Ms. Martina Grundler was elected as the new trade union representative on the supervisory board and successor for Ms. Glusemler. Ms. Grundler is the head of the federal specialized group Insurances at Verdi. She's been working in the insurance industry since 1990, first for DKV in Cologne and later on for Ergo Insurance Group. She's also behind me here on the stage and Ms. Grundler, I would also like to welcome you once again cordially to our supervisory board and we're looking forward to our co cooperation with you. And finally, I would also like to say goodbye to Peter Sutherland, um, as Mr. Sutherland celebrated his 17th anniversary just recently. He resigned his office as, in, uh, as the shareholder representative on the supervisory board in following our internal regulations. Um, Mr. Sutherland had been, has been a member of our supervisory board since January 2010 and has belonged to our risk committee ever since. In 2012, Mr. Sutherland moreover became a member of the nomination committee. Dear Mr. Sutherland, supervisory board, board of management and the whole Allianz company have participated from your exceptional expertise and international experiences. Um, therefore, I would like to thank you on behalf of the supervisory board and the board of management, but also on my personal behalf for your valuable contributions to our supervisory board and for your deep time to Allianz. We wish you all the best for your future, dear Mr. Sutherland. <clears throat> The supervisory board proposes um, Dr. Friedrich Eichina as successor for Mr. Sutherland for uh, the position on the supervisory board. The election is supposed to, to occur for the remaining term of, of office until the AGM 2017, and you can find Dr. Eichina's CV in the invitational brochure. Dr. Eichina, I would like to welcome you here amongst us today, and could you just quickly introduce Itself to our shareholders personally with a few words.
Thank you very much, Mr. Perlet. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to quickly introduce myself. My name has been mentioned, Friedrich Eichine. I am 61 years old, was born in Eichstätt in Bavaria. I am married with three adult children. I have studied business administration in Regensburg and Munich and also received my uh, doctorate here in Munich. Ever since 1987, I have been with BMW. WAG. I started my career at BMW in logistics. I was responsible for the process system development in different projects. Then I became head of the international distribution control and development and following that head of group planning. And since 2007, I've been a member of the board of BMW. First of all, I was responsible for group development and brand development and also for financial services. Since December of 2008, I've been CFO of BMW AG. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ahina. Your deep expertise when it comes to accounting and auditing, just as well as your experiences from a largely customer-oriented industrial sector with significant financial service activities, turn you, from my point of view, into an ideal candidate for our supervisor board. We're therefore grateful that you're willing to run for a for an office on our supervisory board, ladies and gentlemen will now enter into the agenda. I call upon agenda item one, presentation of the approved annual financial statements and the approved consolidated financial statements as of December 31st, 2015, and of the management reports for Allianz SE and for the group, the explanatory reports on the information and the other reports of supervisory boards and board of management for the business year 2015. Let me first come to the presentation of the year-end statements. The approved fun, fun, annual financial stand, statements and the approved consolidated financial statements as well as the management reports were audited by KPMG AG Wirtschaftsprüfungsgesellschaft and deemed in good order. The auditors issued unqualified audit opinions for both statements. Board of Management and annual auditors explained the auditing documents in detail to the audit committee and the plenary session of the supervisory board. The supervisory board approved of the or deemed the financial statements in good order and therefore the financial statements of Allianz SE have been approved of. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll now come to the report of the supervisory board. In the business year 2016, we performed six plenary sessions in, in, in in addition, to this, in addition to this, there were 17 meetings of supervisory board committees. You will find a detailed pre presentation of our work in the group management report on pages 12 and following. Let me just take out some of the major points here. In all the supervisory board meetings, the board of management explained to us in detail the business development in the individual business segments. Moreover, the board of management informed us on a regular basis about audit and compliance issues and about the status of material legal proceedings. We intensively discussed the renewal agenda of the Board of Management and the company strategy based on this agenda. Mr. Bete will talk about this in more detail in a few minutes. In addition to this, last year the challenges in the life insurance business as a consequence of the persistent low interest to face played a major role in our discussions. That is why we received especially detailed reports on current topics from the life insurance business. Also, the development of capital resources following new solvency requirements were discussed time and again with the Board of Management. In addition to this, we also dealt with the implementation of the law on, e on the equal participation of men and women in management and positions and executive positions. I would now like to talk just quickly about the compensation of the board and the supervisory board. You will find detailed explanations on this in the compensation report on pages 37 and following. 
in the group management report. The compensation system for the, f for the management board has remained unchanged and has been explained in detail in the compensation report. Fixed compensation and variable compensation have remained unchanged compared to the previous year. Objectives and performance measurements for the variable compensation will be adapted from 2016 onwards to the new strategy. And in addition to this, the supervisor board, after detailed assessment, decided on in December of last year to adjust the contributions to the pension scheme of the board of management. In the future, there will be a unified contribution rate of 50% of basic, basic compensation to the fully funded pension scheme. With this new contribution rate, we come closer to the average of the DAX 30 companies. The compensation of the supervisor board uh, once again consists from a pure uh, fixed compensation which is being detailed in section 11 of the statutes. The memberships and different in the committees are also are compensated in accordingly. Part of the work of the supervisory board is also to look for the standards of good governance and details about the development of corporate governance in the Alliance Group can be found in the Declaration on Corporate Governance and in the Corporate Governance Report, which are both contained in the Management Report. The Board of Management and the Supervisory Board issued the Declaration of Compliance to the recommendations of the German Corporate Governance Code in December 2015 and made this declaration available to the shareholders of the company on the website of the company. We follow all the recommendations in of the code in its form of the 5th of May of 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, against a continued difficult uh, economic backdrop, Allianz also in 2015 proved its strength and justified the trust of its investors, customers and employees with another remarkable result. This good result of Allianz in the year of its 125th anniversary was based on a, the huge efforts, the exemplary efforts of all the employees and also based on the successful and future-oriented management. I'm therefore certain that I can also speak on your behalf, behalf ladies and gentlemen, in thanking the Board of Management and all the employees of Allianz for their committed and successful work. Thank you very much. So much at this juncture regarding the report of the Supervisory Board. I will now ask the Chairman of the Board, Mr. Olivier Bete, for his report. So, good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, dear shareholders. Also on behalf of the Board of Allianz SA, I hereby welcome you to this year's AGM for the year 2015. And we have um, made progress into the year 2016. That's why I'm going to tell you more about that. I will have two parts of my speech. One part about the business 2015 and the things we do. And at the end, I'm going to give you a few more personal remarks. I would like to start as regards business of 2015 and our agenda. I would like to cover three topics this morning. First of all, 2015, again, was a highly successful year for our Allianz. All interest groups profited from that and specifically our shareholders benefited from that. Our economic and technological framework conditions are under change fundamentally. That's why we are obliged to adjust to that, but we're acting from a position of strength. Our strategic program of continuity and renewal pursues highly ambitious goals and also focuses on our customers. Then let me briefly talk about the year 2015. Allianz is not only seen by us as an um, earnings machine, but also it's an important part of our society. And um, that's why we have a contribution in three areas. financial 
performance, secondly, organizational strength, and thirdly, the area of trust, because that is the basis of why a lot of customers are with us and why you are also with Allianz. But before I talk about the financial figures in more detail, so on behalf of my colleagues of the Board of Management, I'd like to express my gratitude to our customers and to our almost 150,000 employees for our outstanding work. So without the continu continuous um, performance and commitment, Allianz would never be able to render these outstanding results. And if you look into the rooms, you sometimes forget that. And please allow me to say thanks again to Mr. Dickmann, our predecessor, and who is with us here today. And he has passed on the Allianz to me and us in an excellent condition. Thank you very much. So the work of our employees um, must be said thanks and that so that we are our brand core integrity and competence could be further strengthened. Also in the 126th year of um, its existence, Allianz was excellent in terms of performance and services. Let's have a look at a few figures. Revenues were achieved 125.2 billion euros with a new record high and was 2.4 percent above the previous year, which is a specific performance from external um, persons who looked at it because we changed from traditional life insurance products and changed to capital efficient products that are both better for our customers and also better for our shareholders. The operating result uh, increased by more than 3.2% um, to 10.7 billion euros and is at the upper end of our year-end um, forecast. The net annual surplus was 6.6 uh, billion euros, more than 6% above the previous year, that is for the shareholders. And the solvability ratio based on the new Solvency II regulations was 200% by the year-end and this quote also gives, um, refers to our equity that allows us um, to compensate for um, losses and also to also comply with our com com obligations towards our customers under unfavorable conditions. So uh, this, um, the number of our customers increased to 85.4 million. Let's look at the segment um, PNC. Allianz increased the gross premiums written from 48.3 billion euros by 6.8 percent to more than 51.6 billion euros. With a so-called com combined ratio of 94.6 percent, the operating result increased to 5.4 billion euros. In our segment of life and health insurance, revenues achieved uh, through contributions went um, by 0.6% and went down to 67.3 billion euros. Nevertheless, the operating result increased by 14.1% to 3.327 billion euros and 3.796 billion euros. Both developments and um, the consequence of a new alignment of our life insurance products to um, away from traditional and towards capital-efficient alternative products, the new business margin um, was reduced from 2.6% to 2.1%. And also this control and this change will be continued in the future consistently. We're going to hear more about that. And in the report for the first quarter that we are going to render in a few days, we will um, say that in more detail. When it comes to asset management, the investment volume went down to by 2.1% to 1.763 billion euros. 1,763 billion euros. Sorry for that. The figures are sometimes too big. The operating result um, was reduced from 2.6 billion euros by 11.8% to 2.3 billion euros. The reason was the, the decline of the margin of our subsidiary PIMCO that has been discussed several times in the past. The um, net outflows that were quite considerable last year have improved and went to 1.7 billion euros. If you look at all segments in total, you can see the resistance and the power of the Allianz portfolio. The weakness of PIMCO that is still evident was uh, compensated by the strong performance in PNC and life and health. And it was even more than that compensated.
Doch. However, es geht nicht nur um Finanzen. We're not only talking about financial figures in Allianz. Auch bei den Kämpfen, also when it comes to the key figures that relate to the organizational performance of Allianz, haben wir uns we have further improved ourselves. The most important key figure is the willingness of our customers to um, recommend Allianz to friends and family members. And we call this in English the Net Promoter Score, which is an internationally acknowledged key figure. And in 2015, we have improved in two areas. First of all, we were able that, um, that you know, the share of the um, divisions that enjoy the highest customer satisfaction in the markets, were, we were able to re increase it for, from 32 to 34%. And the share of the division with an um, above average customer satisfaction was increased uh, from 15 to 16% in the market. So on the bottom line, more than 50% of our divisions show a customer satisfaction that is above market average, which is a very good progress, but also there's still work to be done because um, in the other half of the business, we have not reached the target yet. It's not only customer satisfaction that has increased, but also the um, satisfaction of the employees that has increased. And this value has been um, measured by the Allianz Engagement Survey. We also call it AS. And um, in 2015, we were able to increase it from 72 to 75 percent. In these times of change and external pressure, this was definitely not a matter of course, ladies and gentlemen. Wichtig ist für uns das Thema What is important is trust of our customers and our shareholders, and the trust is also expressed in different key figures. Integrity, competence, and sustainability. That is nothing you can measure directly, but you can have a look at how brand values develop. We brought you two examples. We're number one brand when it comes in brand finance which is the largest brand measuring procedure and we're the strongest brand within financial service providers and we rank among upon the top 50 we're the only insurance brand. Our resilience is being um, assessed quite high and our financial strength is rated by double A with priced S&P S &P. we're at the upper end and we're better than almost all peers as you can see on this chart very nicely. To be on top is good. Since Allianz in the previous business year rendered such a great result, we um, propose to further increase the dividend to seven euro thirty cents. This increase of the dividend is also possible because the Allianz is e the holding of Allianz Group or, uh, renders an annual surplus of three point five five four billion euros after deduction of taxes, which is almost fourteen percent more than in the previous year. This nice development of our financial key figures, but also the organizational strength, is also reflected in the share price development of Allianz. Last year, we had a share price development of 19.1%. That led to an overall um, profit of uh, your shares, and that in 2015 was 24.6% as a yield, which is quite good. And um, this way, the European in index of and many peers and the tax significantly was left behind us. Now, dear shareholders, unfortunately, we cannot rest on these laurels because currently our competitive environment is changing ever faster and more substantially and profoundly. So first of all, the um, global and political environment factors are changing, not only temporarily but structurally. So um, declining um, growth and um, also geopolitical conflicts and unrest and terrorism and, and um, social polarization, just to mention a few aspects. And if these factors would not only uh, give you enough reasons for concerns, we're also faced with one of the biggest challenges at the moment that an insurance company and a financial service provider could have in a total negative interest. And this might go on for several years. Since um, approximately 65% of our revenues come from capital investments, this will hit us in the core of our, cost of our company. That's why 
the return of new investments went down from 3.6 uh, to 2.5 percent, which also gives us a, a lot of pressure on, on to our revenues and costs. Aber es bleibt nicht bei den dargestellten volkswirtschaftlichen But these are not only the macroeconomic and political challenges enough, but um, our industry also is faced with further structural changes um, that is going to um, give us another trend in our competitive landscape. Um, this part, apart from the continued um, re-regulation re of our industry, the digitalization is quite important for our value chain, and we have a lot of radical changes in a lot of industries in the media industry and, and trade, and not only in mobile communication or computers. Ladies and gentlemen, you know the example yourself where digital aggressors um, are threatening established market leaders or have become faster, and there are a lot of names out there. And as on our core business, insurance and asset management, um, cost pressure and investment pressure will increase on the technological side, and this will also lead to further chances and opportunities specifically for us. We can offer better, simpler and more customer-oriented products and services and the big investments required for that can be realized by market leader like Allianz much better than its peers. Given the scenario of this fundamental and ever-changing changes and faster changes, together with more than 100 executives in the second half of last year, we held a strategic program that we implemented. This is supposed to, in, to make Allianz able to not only master our challenges, but also to see this as our chance to further expand our leading position. For this, we need our solid um, basics and principles. We have a strong portfolio and um, a mature market, the high competence of our employees, highly solid process and strong control mechanisms. We want in Zukunft in the future, our portfolio and our local market positions will be systematically strengthened. And of course, we will focus on a um, competitive oriented uh, cult corporate culture and we will, will further introduce this um, leadership uh, structure. We want to be faster on the market. Our group language is called um, heritage and renewal and continuity and re renewal. And that is not a coincidence. Continuity because um, not everything has to be changed in Allianz. And many of the things that we're doing is excellently installed and it has just to be strengthened. If our, um, so specifically, integrity, competence, and sustainability are quite important core values. So change is not an end in itself, and uh, the trust of the customers into Allianz will remain our highest asset. And that's exactly where our new agenda will start because we do not know when and how the global economy is going to grow. We do not know either when the low interest policy will come to an end finally, and we do not know either um, which internet giant or which startup is going to try uh, to revolutionize our business models or to, to kick us to the side. But we know one thing for, clear, for sure. Only if we are able to offer our customers more than um, be better than other traditional uh, competitors, we could will remain to be successful. Only if our products will become high-performing and um, comprehensible and, and if our services can be perceived as um, empathically and uh, really good, then we can also earn good margins. And that's exactly what we plan. And that is why our program cons contains consistent customer orientation, which is one focus point of our program. Expansion of leadership positions or target markets uh, will be characterized by and supported by four more uh, core elements. So digitalization, technical excellence, growing in our core business areas, and the new um, growth areas, and the further development of our integration. Um, performance culture. These are the key figures. And um, of course, I could um, spend a lot of time going through these individual areas. And I would like to just give you a few examples of what we're doing. So the target of uh, digital um, is not only to digitalize not only our products and our process. By 2018, for example, in private um, PNC, all our products um, will be offered online. And um, each customer uh, should 
should be able to communicate with us um, um, paperless uh, based on digital by default. That is a radical change in the past. And apart from digitalization of existing business, we also systematically invest into attractive new digital business models in the future. With the initiative Technical Excellence, for example, in PNC, in all units, we're implementing new price systems for the better risk adequate control of portfolios. In life insurance, we are reducing risks in existing portfolios and also the new alignment of our new business mix. And apart from that, we have started new initiatives in order to make progress with the new growth fields. Also in mature markets like in Germany, the first examples are the new digital um, agency models and also the expansion of um, the banking distribution in PNC. Ultimately, we are also working on strengthening the inclusive meritocracy in the group. And what is meant by that? So it's all about the development of employees. Uh, that is, will be quite as important in the future as it is important that they render the performance for the customer and the company. It's not only a decisive whether we reach, achieve our targets, but how we achieve our targets. That's why both aspects will have the same relevance in assessing the performance in the future. Behavioral aspects also play a role when it comes to recruitment or advances. This will be accompanied by regular feedback um, dialogues between executives and employees about the quality of their performance and the quality of um, the management. So with all these uh, new core topics um, of this new uh, agenda, um, qualified uh, networked teams work with operating uh, groups and who are going to implement these measures strategically. And it's starting now. We've done a lot in the meantime. That it was not just for the sake of the program. And you can tell by the picture on the, on the wall, we can, you can see things that we have covered already when it comes to our customer centricity and um, operating uh, processes were implemented in digitalization. We have achieved digital offices and we have a global digital agenda. And each of these elements um, not only sees concepts, but we also see practical progress. But still, there's a lot that needs to be done. Ladies and gentlemen, you can only have enthusiastic companies, uh, co customers in a company um, in which employees work with high motivation. And the, the other way around is true as well. And that's why we decided, um, apart from having two um, challenging financial goals, we also set two visible targets for the further improvement of our organizational strength. These four targets were presented on the Capital Day in November 2015 already. And as you know, the response from the capital market was very positive, and also interest groups gave us very good response. First of all, about performance. By 2018, our equity return should go up to 13%, and the annual um, share and profit per share should be 5%. And the improvement of our organizational strength will be measured by the fact that 75% of our divisions show a customer satisfaction above market average. As I outlined before today, we are at 50% at the moment. And our internal key figure for uh, the performance of our uh, management culture is to increase from 68 at the moment to 72% in the future. This is to express how employees assess um, their motivation and, and, and also the quality of the managerial behavior. And we are working on this implementation agenda intensively, and we're going to inform you about further progress next year. At the beginning of my speech, I described, despite all the changes, there is nothing that will be changed. So we will stick with our value, integrity, competence, and sustainability. We won't accept any compromises. Allow me to, um, to talk about that. Integrity. The requirements of um, ethnically clear behavior and also um, the costs for any um, mistreatment 
treatments even more. So you were able to see this in the behavior of the financial services. So we're quite happy that we were safe from the existing scandals. And believe me, everyone in the company is working hard that it will stay like that. So our brand and our reputation have to stay faultless. Competence. We only want to work in business fields and markets where we belong to the best providers, where competence is not only appreciated, but where it is also appropriately compensated. And sustainability means that apart from being um, resilience against crisis and high capital strength, we will have a long-term view to the right balance in our economic system and the markets. As one of the worldwide leading investors and insurers, we are aware of our social responsibility, and we're going to talk about that in more detail later. And being one of the biggest investors, and we are facing dialogue with different interest groups, shortly from now, there will be a systematic approach that will create a balance between the profit interests and of our shareholders and customers, and also that will also safeguard the environmental effects. Of course, we will not be able to please all the parties, but we will be um, show our decisions in a transparent, systematic, and um, clear manner, and with all the decisions. And I'm giving you my promise for that. Let me just briefly touch upon the results of the first quarter, ladies and gentlemen. We have announced them already on Monday. And after an excellent first quarter in 2015, also 2016, we were highly successful in starting into the year. Revenues were slightly below previous year, um, also because of the continued recontrolling of the um, life insurance business. That's why this decline is linked with positive effects and is is desired as well. The oper operating profit also was slightly below the previous year level. The um, quarter income was 20% higher, to, uh, up to 2.2 billion euros for uh, the shareholders. And despite distortions of the mar uh, capital market and the historic low on the interest side, please bear in mind that government bonds with a term of nine, up to nine years, um, they currently offer negative interest. That means you have to pay the government for giving them the money. Our Solvency 2 ratio um, has uh, remained at 186% by consequence management. And um, this also is due to um, a slight change because of the um, change of the law. And we still have a solid Solvency ratio with a lower sensitivity. Under the bottom line, the results are very excellent for the first quarter. Dear shareholders, before I come to the end of my first report as CEO, I'd like also to say a few personal words. And um, 360 63 days ago, that was the leap year, I started this office as the 10th um, CEO in the 126th year of the history of Allianz. Last, on the first day, on the 7th of May 2016, despite all, all the Rhineland enthusiasm, I felt a bit uneasy, of course. Um, this is an enormous responsibility for the future of more than 80 million customers with a, almost 150,000 employees, many thousand business partners and, and your shareholders. And so that I'm standing here firmly and um, that I can look with full enthusiasm into the future is owed to three performance providers. First of all, our customers and our sales partners. Last year, I had the pleasure of um, having a lot of customer talks and I met a lot of people. And I found something when I talked to our customers and our great agents, any, a lot that can be improved, but I even more so found a lot of trust, respect, and um, appreciation for Allianz and that is really giving me a lot of motivation. Secondly, my colleagues on the board and our mem and employees in the company, ladies and gentlemen, corporate governance is definitely a team sport today. Without the cooperation and our um, management team, this renewal agenda could have never been developed. And without our top 150 executives, we wouldn't have been able to um, implement it. Thank you cordially to my colleagues and to the managers and also to Dr. Perlet, who always has 
assisted me with advice. But also thanks to the um, support of our employees. And I'm also explicitly include our workers' representatives who give me a lot of power for my task. And your support, dear shareholders, because in today's volatile uh, economic and political environment, investors might lose patience soon, specifically when the framework conditions of an industry change fundamentally as it is seen here. With many dialogues we had and with your representatives, we have received a lot of support for the new program for a top topic, and thank you very much for that. And there's one more request. And please also stay with us, even if the um, headwinds will become stronger. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. So you might ask yourself, um, what about this picture here? I'm going to explain you this picture, because we're using the full force and full power in implementing our new program, and we thought of how can we uh, visualize this chapter into a new chapter, and we just said, okay, we want to start with a partnership with Under Armour, that is the sports provider, to realize the so-called Allianz World Run that started two days ago. So in 90 days, all employees we want to run as many kilometers as possible, and not only worldwide, we want to activate our team spirit for a new agenda, but also, you know, in the sense of the word, we want to mobilize that. But jointly, we want to pursue a good purpose. Allianz uh, gives a good donation for each um, kilometer run to the SOS uh, children's villages. And I'm wearing the uh, shoes uh, designed by Allianz World Run, although it does not really fit my suit. Our Allianz is ready for the next next marathon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Bete, for this highly informative and poignant report of the Board of Management. And the question is now, uh, may the shareholders also participate in the Allianz World Run, not just the supervisory board members? No, unfortunately, it's only for our employees. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, those of you following our AGM on the internet, um, I would like to inform you that at this juncture, the public part of our live broadcast will end. If you can follow the remainder of the AGM only if you're a shareholder of Allianz SE and have um, logged into the internet broadcast with your shareholder number and your access password.